Long live your turtle here, and this video I'm making a DIY above tank basking platform. It's based on the ever so popular egg crate design, which means you only need one tool, and that is a pair of scissors to make this entire setup here. Overall, it's around $60 to $70, which is super cheap for an extremely important feature for your turtle tank. I'm gonna go over exactly what you need for this, step by step on how to build this, and how you can install on your tank. You can scale this however you want to fit basically any size tank you want for any size turtle you want. Let's get to building this. All right, first thing I talk about is materials and tools. Check out the description for a list of all the materials we use here. First thing, some E6000 glue, great for gluing plastic. Next thing, 11 by 14, 093 inch acrylic sheet. Got this from any hardware store. Um, next thing you want is a big container of zip ties. You always need zip ties, so big containers just fine. You're not gonna use them all. Then the most important of all, egg crate. You're gonna find this in the lighting section of your hardware store. It's gonna be white at a hardware store. You're gonna have to special order it online if you want black. And then for the platform area of our basking area, I actually use sample pieces of vinyl tile. You can get unlimited amount of these at the hardware store. Just pick out your favorite design and go with that. And then last but not least, I have some Thrive Reptile carpet. You can use another carpet, but just a little piece is needed for the ramp here. And like I said, the only tool you need is a nice pair of scissors, and then I suggest having a little piece of sandpaper and a tape measure just to help you out with cleaning things up a bit. And that's it, not much to this build, pretty easy. Let's get to building this. All right, so the first thing I do is I get the tank I'm gonna build this basking platform for. It's a 40 gallon breeder I'm showing here, just over 18 inches wide, and just making this whole design just slightly bigger to about 18.5 inches wide. Uh, it's gonna fit my 75 gallon aquarium too, and it'll fit other aquariums with that 18 and a half ish inch wide width. Now I made it about 19 and three inches long and 11 and a half inches tall in the end. Um, and right now I'm just kind of sizing out the base area that is gonna be that basking area. And we're also gonna cut our ramp out of it as well. So what's important here is it needs to be a little bit wider than whatever tank you're using. Otherwise it's not gonna fit. So once you have all your sizing out, it's time to start cutting that egg crate and cutting it is more like breaking it. So the magic way to break your egg crate is brute force. You just use your scissors and you just start hacking that horizontal ligament on your egg crate until it breaks and then you kind of just go down the line. You have to do everything basically in lines, otherwise it's kind of hard to uh, size with that, any sort of intricate shapes. So one thing I want to point out here while I'm breaking this at high speed is be careful while you're breaking these. Start slow at first because you have two four foot by two foot sheets and you can only make one or two big mistakes uh, and then you'll run out of that spare material. Once you have the ramp area to the right size, always do a fit check, uh, especially with this part because everything is gonna rely on this cornerstone part, you might say. The next step is to determine what you need to break to make your ramp area. Now, the ramp area is a little special because you're basically going to be breaking off what you're gonna be using for your ramp. So you need to be careful in two ways here. You need to be careful on the overall basking area that we just made, and you also need to be careful with making sure that ramp piece is still one piece and you haven't broken off extra ligaments that you shouldn't have. You can see here I use tape to kind of be a template, a guide, so that I wasn't overdoing it. Just be careful here. With that basking area and ramp size, it's time to start making your walls. I'm doing the front wall here. I'm showing you that there's gonna be an overlap in the front of the tank that's gonna help us hold it to the tank. I'm making it 11 and a half inches tall, so this front and back wall are actually gonna be 12 inches to give that extra half inch, that extra plastic grid, you might say, of overlapping on the front and back panel so that it won't be easy to just push off the tank. Now, same process here. Once you have the size of the walls you want, start breaking away at those sizes until you have four walls, and then we'll focus on that front panel a little more in the future here. All right, like I said, we're gonna focus on the front panel now. So that's gonna be your 12 inch for this design. It's gonna be that one that's gonna be a little bit longer than your side panels. But this is the panel that's gonna get that front viewing window, that 11 by 14 acrylic sheet we have. You don't have to modify that acrylic sheet in any way. We're just gonna be breaking out part of that egg crate in the center area so that your window will be a window and it won't have all that egg crate in the way. So kind of the goal here is to have two or three rows of those square plastic grids 
for points where you're going to glue your acrylic sheet onto like a frame of your egg crate. And you'll see what the opening looks like in a bit. But you want a row or two of your egg crate so that you'll have enough surface area for enough glue for your acrylic sheet to stick on there. Now you'll notice to start breaking this, I actually use my scissors to chop some of the ligaments. That's because this is a sensitive area that can be really easy to break off too much. I'm also using that tape to make sure I'm in the right area here. And with that last window piece, you're all done sizing all of that egg crate. Congratulations, no more tiny plastic pieces all over whatever your work surface is. The next step is to glue that acrylic sheet that we have onto our front window that now has a nice frame. So first thing you need to do, of course, is take off the protective film on your window. You'll see how much clearer this thing looks when that's gone. And once you do that, it's as simple as lining up where exactly you want it and either marking that off somehow or just remembering and then start applying glue uh, pretty generously but not overly so, so that's not dripping everywhere because you'll be able to see big drips but you won't be able to see uh, just small spots. And I really focus on corners where you have uh, four ligaments coming into one, basically the center of four squares you might say. Uh, and just apply that all the way around and it's as simple as just gluing and then putting your acrylic sheet on top of it. And just to make sure everything was secure, I used a spare board I had lying around, another weight, which was just this windshield wiper fluid I had, just to make sure it glues well. And there you go. That's it. I let it dry for 24 hours. Now it's time to use that giant canister of zip ties. You're going to have several different sizes in here, and it's kind of up to you what sizes you want. Uh, the bigger ones are going to be more secure, but they're also going to be bigger. So they're going to stick out a little more. And the small ones are really small, so they're kind of hard to deal with. So I usually use the medium ones. I can't remember what size it was, but I believe it was the eight inch zip ties. And what you can see here is I'm taking our sidewall and I'm basically kind of learning how to do it in this first step, but find a corner on your sidewall and your ramp and they're gonna be flush as shown. And then you're just gonna zip tie around it. And I make sure that little zip tie uh, button, I guess, or where all the, the zipping happens is uh, on the outside where I can kind of hide it from being on the inside. So it's kind of hard to see and you'll see how I kind of tuck it in to the little plastic grids later. Uh, but you're just gonna have to kind of figure out how many zip ties you need to cross. I went every two or three uh, grid points depending on which wall I was doing to make sure it was just really secure. Uh, the more the merrier, honestly, if you just want to do every single grid, you're just gonna have a really strong basking dock. So there's no problem with just doing every grid with a zip tie. You can see I'm now working on the back wall here. So basically I'm using the vertical direction now where I'm using the vertical set of grid points next to each other. And you can see uh, there's that overlap there that we were talking about before. Make sure you remember that there needs to be one basically grid of that plastic egg crate below on the front and back panels below those side ones and that will just help it hold onto the tank. So again, just putting as many zip ties as I would say at least every other or every third grid should have a zip tie to make sure this is secure enough. Um, the more the merrier though. As we work our way around here, you're basically doing this for all the walls and all of the vertical corners and all the horizontal corners uh, into that basking area as well. And it's all about just getting enough zip ties and making sure when you're kind of doing this that you're aligning them so they're hard to see. And one tip here is not to tighten them all the way until you have all of them installed. Uh, that way you have a lot more flexibility on getting everything to be aligned and just a lot easier to work with instead of just going full tightness right away. And another little piece of advice is rotate them right before you tighten them all the way to a place where they're kind of out of sight. And this will be much more obvious when you're actually working with these zip ties and you realize what I'm talking about, but you have so many zip ties in that container, if you have the same one as me, that you can make many, many mistakes and you're gonna have a lot of zip ties on backup. So just go crazy, figure out what you need to do, and it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, as you can see, I didn't chop off any of the tails on these zip ties, so it looks kind of goofy as we go here, just a bunch of little antennas sticking out, like a little porcupine. Uh, but, you know, it just it's easy to keep track of where the zip ties were and it was kind of fun to do it all at the end Because I'm weird, I guess
All right, all wall and platform zip ties have been installed now. Just need to cut off those tails, but I'm just kind of giving you a close up of what everything's looking like. Where all of the larger part of those zip ties are kind of tucked in, uh, out of sight, out of mind, the, to the best of my ability. But if you got this far, there's no turning back. Cut those tails off. All right, with everything in order, do a little strength test here. Just kind of pick things up and move them around, maybe drop it a little bit, not too hard. Don't, don't go crazy, it's just gonna be a turtle on this. But just make sure everything is really sturdy with the zip ties that you have installed. If you are not happy with the sturdiness, did you fill in all of the little squares? If not, do so, and it should be very strong if you've installed enough zip ties. Now you just reached another important milestone, so it's time for another fit check. You don't want to keep going here if it's not fitting. This is the only time you can really turn back from now on. Now here I just want to show you that overlap that we have on the tank, and that's just really going to help it hold on sturdy so you can't just push this off, or if you have a kid in the house, they can't just yank or push this thing off the tank very easily, especially if there are turtles up there. That's a no goodie. Next step is installing the ramp, arguably one of the more important installations to be careful with here because if you get this wrong, then your turtle can't climb into the great basking area you just built. So what you wanna do is make sure you get your ramp at the correct angle that your turtle can easily climb. And you also need to be deep enough in the water that your turtle can reach the ramp. So first thing to do here is to use zip ties to attach that top part of your ramp to the basking area, that center horizontal part that's cut out. Now I'm doing this upside down because it's gonna be at an angle, so it's kind of hard to do the other way. Uh, so doing it upside down, just remember everything you're thinking about needs to be upside down, otherwise your ramp's gonna go the wrong way. So I did the little four inch zip ties here because this is gonna be a high traffic area for your turtle and I want the zip ties getting in the way. So I just used a zip tie on every single one of those little plastic squares uh, just to attach it. Remember, and if you're following this design, remember to center your basking dock so you should have a free square on each side of your ramp because your ramp is two squares smaller based on how you broke it originally. Okay, so the next part is a little bit of trial and error here. And what you're gonna be doing is taking the larger type zip ties, I think I did eight and even 11 inch here. And what you're gonna be doing is supporting your ramp a little bit further down on the ramp itself, using that basking area platform that you didn't break out kind of next to that area where the ramp is. So you can see here, I basically just did some big loops. So definitely start with big loops, don't tighten it all the way because you're gonna to have to figure out how much you need to tighten it so that when you put some weight on the ramp, it's at the angle that you want the ramp to be for when your turtle is trying to climb it. So I wouldn't ever go over 45 degrees because once you get steeper than that, your turtle is gonna probably have a pretty hard time climbing this. So try to stick to 45 degrees, uh, maybe even 40, 35, and that'll be a lot easier for your turtle to climb. Now I used three zip ties on each side and that gave plenty of support for this ramp you don't wanna just do one because that's also gonna really stress the basking area platform. So three was kind of the magic number here. You don't have to go all the way to the bottom of the ramp. I think I went about two thirds the way with the last one on the ramp. And so basically just kind of finesse it so that they all get to an equal length, but a length that they all tighten when you pull down on them. All right, with all those zip ties installed, I'm showing you when I push on it, all of them tighten equally. You want them to all be taut at the same time so that they're all taking load when your turtle starts to climb on it. Otherwise, there's no point in having three on each side. You just have one on each side, but that puts a lot of stress on those little plastic grids. You don't want to do that. So having all three of those acting effectively is the goal here. 
Now the next step I show here is, I would say optional, but definitely recommended. You can see as I slide the basking area, it can just slide off the end of the tank really easily. So depending on your setup, this could be a dangerous configuration if your turtle's up there, they could fall to the ground. So a really easy solution to this is I'm basically gonna take one of those spare pieces of a crate that I broke off. I'm gonna make a little piece that's just one grid tall and I'm going to basically zip tie it to the bottom. Uh, just a couple grid points in, you can see here where I locate that and just pretty much hold it in place with a couple zip ties and that's gonna become a sort of stop that where if your turtle basker was being pushed, it'll eventually hit this little stopper and it won't fall off the edge of your tank as long as you didn't punt it. And once I installed that, I'm just gonna show you real quick how that little device works, that little stopper. See, you push and it stops, voila. Simple and worth the extra couple minutes of effort here. All right, with your ramp and everything ready to go here, it's time to make that ramp much more climbable. It creates kind of climbable for turtles, but a lot are gonna have a problem with it. Uh, so the easiest thing to do is get a great piece of reptile carpet. So I'm using a Thrive reptile carpet here and just gonna cut it to fit right on that ramp we made. The thing I wanna note here is this kind of reptile carpet that I'm using is just basic carpet. It doesn't have any additives. Be careful because there are some brands that put anti-fungus uh, or microbial into the carpet and that could get into your water column and that could be toxic for your tank inhabitants. Now, to actually attach your carpet to this egg crate is kind of a little goofy because you're basically putting little holes into the sides of the carpet where you're gonna stick the small four inch zip tie and use it kind of as like a thread almost. You're threading a zip tie through the hole in the carpet as I'm showing here, I have a bunch of them, and then you're gonna thread that through the edge of your egg crate ramp. And basically just do this. I think I have four or five on each side, and then you're gonna do it on the top as well. And I installed just a couple on the bottom as well. Just make sure when you're doing this and you have all your zip ties in, you can't pull up the carpet really at all. It needs to be taut and it needs to be sturdy on there. All right, carpet installed. Let's take a close look at what I did here just so you can get an idea of the spacing and the amount of different zip ties I used and where they were located, but this is really sturdy on there and it won't be torn up or picked off by the turtle. Okay, next step is to install the flooring to our basking area. Now I'm gonna use these sample vinyl tiles that I got from Home Depot. You can get these from Lowe's as well and probably some other hardware stores. But the fact that Home Depot had these samples available was awesome because I can just take a handful without anyone batting an eye. So I just use the samples because I don't need as much as full packs that you otherwise have to buy, which is, I think comes like 25 or 30 in a pack and that's like 25 to $40. I can just get these for free. And I chose this red oak because I like the color, but there's all sorts of different designs you can choose from. Uh, you can have stone slates or other types of wood but I really like this look, so I went with this red oak type little flooring. Now the cool thing about vinyl tile is the backing is sticky. So as long as you take off the sticky part of the back of the tile, it will stick pretty well to that egg crate, even though the egg crate barely has uh, that much surface area to stick to. It's a very sticky type adhesive, so it sticks quite well. If you ever have problems with it sticking, maybe you're using it for quite a while and the stickiness goes away, you can easily just use that E6000 glue and just kind of dab little corners of each tile to have it permanently stick there. But 
it's actually kind of nice to have it not permanently stuck, at least in the beginning, because then you could change it out if you really wanted to really easily. But just with those samples, look how nice that looks. That is, just looks like a professional floor there. Vinyl tile is great, by the way. And it's water resistant, and it's pretty tough for the turtle to actually damage it with their nails. But yes, light bracket time, getting carried away with the vinyl tile, apparently. We are gonna use an Exoterra light bracket to basically have an adjustable light stand for our turtle basker. And the design of this actually makes it quite easy to just use zip ties to attach it to our sidewall. And it actually has an adhesive area that you're supposed to stick onto glass of a tank. We don't have that for this egg crate style, but we can just use zip ties and I'll show you in a second. But you basically have a rod and then you have this base unit and we're gonna put that base unit pretty close to the top because most basking lights actually need to be farther away than you would think especially when you want higher wattage ones or mercury vapor bulbs. So I'm showing you here with this base unit, you're basically gonna take the bigger zip tie and you're gonna go around through your egg crate and then back around so that it kind of lodges into the cutouts in that bracket. But the whole idea is to use those cutouts, those slots. They have basically a thickness of the material of the bracket where it can rest on top of your zip tie and then when you zip tie it tight enough it basically can't dislodge itself and it's held on there really tightly and securely which you obviously want because you're gonna be holding a really hot bulb over a potentially basking turtle and you don't want that to fall on your turtle you also don't want it to fall on your basking area melting things and causing all sorts of damage and havoc And with that lamp bracket installed, install the rod as well and kind of adjust it around, see how it works. It's gonna be a little bit harder to move it up and down because you have those zip ties now, but it still works just as it did before. Just use that little screw to tighten it so that it can't slide down in that little slot anymore. I'm showing you here, just installing a mini deep dome to kind of show you how it all works, but it's super simple and it's a really cheap product for how awesome it is, especially if you can integrate it into your basking area like this. And here's a little demo shot of my basking lights on and a little tiny real turtle. So real, look at it go. So small, so real, so beautiful. But yeah, everything looks really well integrated and clean on this design. Enough with this 40 gallon tank though. Let's throw this onto my 75 gallon aquarium and see how it looks. All right, so I showed you this basking platform installed in my 40 gallon breeder. That's what we kind of designed around. But amazingly, there's a lot of other tanks that carry that same or similar width. And this is about 18.4 inches wide, I believe. And we built this to fit 18 and a half, just a little bit over 18 and a half inch wide tanks. And this is the result. It fits on a 75 gallon aquarium like this one between that middle brace and the side of your tank. The same thing for 125 gallon and maybe even 150 gallon tanks with that same 18 and a half inch width. This design is gonna work for, which makes it super versatile. But of course, it's basically a bunch of grid points. So you can scale this however you want for a smaller tank, for a larger tank. The only thing to watch out for with a larger tank is you're gonna lose some of that support in the middle because you're gonna be elongating a pretty weak piece of plastic. So you might need to reinforce it somehow if you're going for like 24 inch tanks. I want to give you that simple, elegant design that you see here. The front window really helps bring this thing out and make it look a little bit less just egg crate and a little more stylized and you can see your turtle a lot better and I think it looks really nice in a room. And here I'm showing you, it's holding a full-size deep dome with a mercury vapor bulb. That's my personal favorite type of basking bulb. And that's it for this build. Thanks for watching all the way through this whole video. I hope it gave you inspiration or an exact build on how to make a basking platform for your pet turtle. If you have any questions on this build, please leave them in the comments section. If you like DIY videos for turtle tanks like this one or indoor turtle ponds, check out my channel for other ideas and inspiration. And if you want to see videos in the future, hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, please hit that like button. 
Thanks for watching and long live your turtle!